to Guru Maharaj and all glories to you. So, uh, Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances and glories to Sri Atravat. Hare Krishna. So, uh, Prabhuji, we have 13 devotees online. Okay. So, shall I start? Yes, Prabhuji, over to you, please. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to read from fourth canto, chapter eight, text number 34. Um, if you could bring that on the screen, thank you very much. Before we do this, we'll just say Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So reading from 4834 4, of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, this chapter uh, is, or this section of the Bhagavatam is dealing with the pastime of Dhruva Maharaj, who has been insulted and therefore um, will eventually perform austerities in order to see the Lord. His purpose in seeing the Lord is to gain um, a kingdom, a greater kingdom than his grandfather. Um, and this verse is very instructive because this is, um, this is advice that's being given to Dhruva Maharaj by Narada Muni. So I'll read the Sanskrit, the translation, the purple, and then we can have some discussion on this because it's a very interesting set of instructions that can help all of us to live more wisely and more effectively as we make our journey towards Krishna. Okay. So guna dikan mudam said. Anukrosham guna damat, matrim samanad and vichen natape abibu yate. I'll just read the word for it as well. Guna adikat, one who is more qualified, mudam, pleasure, lip set, one should feel. Anukrosham, compassion, guna adamat. One who is less qualified may trim friendship, samanat, with an equal. Anvichet, one should desire, na, not, tapahe, by tribulation, abibuyate, becomes affected. Translation in purple by His Divine Grace. Shulaisi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shula Prabhupada Shula Prabhupada Ki Jai. Every man should act like this. When he meets a person more qualified than himself, he should be very pleased. When he meets someone less qualified than himself, he should be compassionate towards him. And when he meets someone equal to himself, he should make friendship with him. In this way, one is never affected by the threefold miseries of this material world. Okay, so if we could go to the... Um, the purple, fantastic, thank you very much. So, purple by his divine grace through the Prabhupada. Prabhupada writes as follows. Generally, when we find someone more qualified than ourselves, we become envious of him. When we find someone less qualified, we deride him. And when we find someone equal, we become very proud of our activities. These are the causes of all material tribulations. The great sage Narada therefore advised that the devotee should act perfectly. Instead of being envious of a more qualified man, one should be jolly to receive him. Instead of being oppressive to a less qualified man, one should be compassionate toward him just to raise him to the proper standard. And when one meets an equal Instead of being proud of one's own activities before him, one should treat him as a friend. One should also have compassion for the people in general who are suffering due to forgetfulness of Krishna. These important functions will make one happy within this material world. Okay, so I'll just say Mangalacharyan. And then we'll get into this very, very powerful, instructive verse, which gives us the clue as to how we can behave properly 
in this world in such a way that we actually progress. Okay, so I think there's a lot to talk about here. Omegyana Tamaranda Syakyana Jana Shilakaya, Chekshu Militam Yanatas Mai Shri, Gurave Namaha, Sri Chaitanya Manovish Tam Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadam Tikam. Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha. Sri Rupam Sagrachatam Sahagana Raganatam Vatam Tuam Sajivam. Sadvaitam Savadutam Virjana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam. Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita. Sri Vishakam Vatamscha. Hey Krishna, Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate. Tabta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari. Rishabhanu Sutadevi Pranamami Hari Priye. Panjagavatrubhyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha. Patita Nambhava Nebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda. Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasudhi Gauravakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare. So there's a lot to unpack here and I'll try and do, I'll try and make some key comments before we open up for questions because this is a very, very relevant and pertinent topic for all of us while we live in this material world. So this is advice that Narada Muni is giving to young Dhruva Maharaj and the advice is absolutely imperative and instructive for anyone who wants to make the journey to Krishna, to make the journey strongly, to make the journey with as little difficulty as possible and to make that journey in a way that is progressive. Behind this verse is a principle. And the principle is that when we do anything properly, we get the maximum outcome and the minimum difficulty. Okay, I'll repeat that. When we do anything properly, then we gain the maximum outcome and we have the minimum difficulty or let's say um, trouble or tribulation. A lot of our difficulties in life have come because we've done something, but we've done it improperly. What, we be, what we're given in this particular verse and purport are divine principles of association. Why is association so important? Think about this. Imagine that you have a tremendous amount of wealth or some kind of opulence but you're told that you can keep the wealth and the opulence on the one condition that you have to be by yourself forever. Practically no one would say yes to that proposition. Why? Because we intuitively understand that the, that the happiness that we derive, even when we're running after some kind of material opulence, whether it's wealth or anything else. It's only valuable if we have other people to associate with and to experience it with. In other words, nothing makes a living entity happy, even materially, unless it's within the arena of relationships. So you have some wealth and then you have people to share that with, then you're happy. You have some um, talent, you have people to interact with with that talent, then you're happy. So it comes down to this idea of relationship. That happiness is intimately and irrevocably tied into the idea of relationship, even in the ultimate sense. Okay, what do I mean by that? Ultimately, we're looking for a relationship with Krishna. And even in the journey to that ultimate relationship with Krishna, we're experiencing that relationship with Krishna and we we accomplish or we revive the relationship with Krishna only through the association of others who are closer to him, only through sadhu sangha. 
So relationship is everything. I repeat, relationship is everything. Now, what does that mean? It means something which is essential. If it's used properly, it can, it can lead to tremendous happiness and satisfaction. If it's used wrongly, it can cause tremendous devastation and pain. Let's put it another way. Those people who we love the most, those are the people who can help us the most, but they are also the people, if we don't relate properly, who can hurt us the most. So what we have here is the science of relationship. Every man should act like this. When he meets a person more qualified than himself, he should be very pleased. Interesting statement. Why should we be pleased when we meet people who are more qualified? <laughs> it's very interesting. The essence of, of elevation, how we grow as individuals is through example. For example, through association with those who are more expert in a given area. You see? So, so our development is always a gift of associating with people who are more elevated than we are, even materially, right? So many of us, we have the experience of learning to drive, okay? How do you learn to drive? You sit in the car with an instructor, with someone who is more adept in that skill than we are, and through the interaction, we rise up. See, so when we meet someone more qualified than ourselves, one of the reasons why we should be very pleased is because that is an invitation and an opportunity for elevation. Very, very simple. Whenever we are in a situation where we come across people more qualified than ourselves, we are opening, if we have the proper relationship, we are opening the doors for some improvement, some serious rising of capability, of consciousness, in our case, as, as devotees. So that is why we should be very pleased, because our growth is really present. The opportunity for development is really present in such association. When we meet someone less qualified than ourselves, we should be compassionate. And that is a very interesting word, compassion. Whenever we meet someone less qualified than ourselves in any area of life, we're actually meeting our former self. Okay. We went on a journey to become more qualified in a certain area. Okay, it was always a journey. And what we're doing when we meet someone less qualified we're meeting someone who is taking the steps that we have taken previously. And there's another esoteric secret here, is that when I help those who are junior to me, right? In other words, when I take the position of a senior and I help those who are junior to me, I'm invoking a subtle principle, a subtle law, which will inspire within the hearts of my seniors, their willingness to help me as the junior. What do I, let me put it another way. I'm, I may be senior to someone, right? All of us will be senior to someone. And just as we are senior to one person, we are junior to someone else. So when we act properly as seniors, we're more likely to inspire that same compassion from those who are above us. You see, the opposite is also true. If I act negatively to people who are junior to me, what goes around comes around. Ultimately, eventually, I will be treated in the same way by my own seniors in some way, shape or form. If I neglect people junior to me, 
for no good reason. I may very well in the future be neglected by my seniors. So what I'm doing for my juniors is what will happen to me at some future point in time. When we meet someone equal to ourselves, we should make friendship. It's a very, very interesting point. When we are dealing with equals, we should have that mood of friendship. It's a companion for my journey. Okay, so in that way also, we're able to reveal the mind with a friend, to support and be supported by a friend, to inspire, assist, and be inspired by and assisted by a real friend. In the third canto, chapter 29, text number 17, Prabhupada says in that purport, that friendship should be made with people of mutual interest and understanding. You see, mutual interests and mutual understanding. In other words, friendship means that we have a common ground. We have some common ground that we both feel inspired by and we can connect with on that basis. So this is what Narada Muni is saying that we should do. Now, <laughs> we're gonna look at what often happens instead. Purple, so generally when we find someone more qualified than ourselves, we become envious. It's a very interesting point. We think, why are you more qualified than me? How can I pull you down? And you see, this is because of tamas. It's because of ignorance. Rather than recognizing how I can gain by this association, right? In other words, someone has a million pounds. Rather than recognizing that because he's got a million pounds, if I relate to him properly and he's actually senior, that means he's good hearted, he's senior not just in position, but senior in consciousness. Then if I act properly and he's proper, then he will like to share what he has. But in ignorance, I instead think he has so much, I'd like to take away what he has. I don't want him to have what he has, which is envy, you see? So we don't see the situation properly because of ignorance. When we find someone less qualified, we deride him. Instead of recognizing this person is on the same journey that I've been on, I think, okay, he's not as qualified as I am, therefore I can lord it over the individual. And again, in doing that to him, I create that reaction whereby the same experience will happen to me at some future time. Last one. Um, when we find someone equal, to, we become very proud of our activities. Yes. Unfortunately, we, 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 we get into a mood of competition, which also indicates insecurity. You see? Why do I need to prove that I'm superior to other people? The reason why I need to prove that I'm superior to other people is because deep within my heart, I have a tremendous fear that I'm actually inferior to other people. Whenever you see someone trying too hard to prove their superiority, it means that they have a deep fear of their inferiority. That's a very interesting point to bear in mind. You see? Now, it's interesting. Narada Muni is talking about how we should behave. And, he, and in this purple, Prabhupada will also speak about the benefit. These important functions will make one happy within this material world. This is so powerful. You could give seminars on this verse in purple because it's giving the science of relationship and the science of discrimination in our dealings with other individuals and especially our dealings with devotees. Our difficulties in community often come because we do not A, understand our position relative to an indivi another individual. Okay, that's point number one. Point number two, even when we understand the pos our position, we may not behave properly towards the other individual, which is being spoken about here. 
But there's even more amazing benefit from this verse in purple that Prabhupada is giving. You see, for example, if I want to deal properly with someone who's actually on the same level as me as, to, as a peer, it requires two things. It requires my proper behavior and recognition that this is a peer, but it also requires their proper behavior and also their recognition, oh, that this person is also a peer. In other words, for example, you can have a proper dealing with a friend if you recognize that this person is actually on the same level as me and I'm gonna behave properly towards him or her. And they also have the same understanding. Isn't it interesting? Proper a mutual interest and understanding in that, pre, in that verse in purple that I mentioned before, 329.17. So it's two-sided, right? So if I meet someone and, and they're actually senior to me and I recognize that they're senior, and I deal with them properly as a junior, and they recognize that they're senior to me, and they deal with me properly as a junior, it works. So every relationship, it requires qualification, adhika. It requires a proper understanding of where I am relative to another person. And it requires proper behavior. So I have to know, What's my relationship to this person? Am I their peer, junior, or senior? That's point number one. Point number two, now that I understand where I am relative to them, I need to know how am I meant to behave towards them based upon our relationship. And I have to actually do that. All of our difficulties in life is because we don't follow what Narada Muni is saying. So sometimes... We will treat someone as a peer, but they're senior to us. So then we lose out on what they have to give. Someone will treat as a threat, as a, yeah, will treat as a, a junior, but they're actually peers. So then we don't get that mutual support because I'm talking to them as if they don't know something when actually, you know what they actually do? They do know that and they do have that mutual understanding. Right. Sometimes we may think someone is a senior when they may even be a junior. <laughs> so the first principle of relationship is recognition. It's very interesting, this word respect. We have to respect other people. In fact, the third verse of Shikshashtakam is the formula for relationship. We offer all respect to others and we do not expect any respect in return. Right. And people may think that means I just I'm just. Oh, Prabhu, Prabhu, Prabhu. No, no. Respect is very interesting, that word. Respect, it comes from the Latin specto, which means literally to see, as in spectacles, spectacular, right? So when you wear spectacles, you wear glasses, they allow you to see clearly. So the, the, the foundation of all relationships is a proper vision. And this is something that we often neglect. If I can't understand the other individual's position properly, I give myself more likelihood that there'll be an issue in how we're going to relate with one another. Hmm? So it's a very, very powerful spiritual science that's given here. That if I want to have these wonderful relationships, I need to actually understand who am I and where am I, what's my position in spiritual life? And then when I'm dealing with another person, I need to be able to understand, oh, actually, this person's senior to me. So therefore, I should treat them as a senior and act in that way. And then things go well. I should recognize someone else. Oh, this person's junior to me. So I shouldn't treat them as a peer, but I should be in a compassionate mood as a senior to them just to raise them to the proper standard. Proper and that's very interesting. Also, I'm not. I'm not acting as a senior so I can continue to look down on them and think that I'm better. No, I'm acting as a senior with compassion, but specifically to bring them up. Not to lord it over them, not to keep them down, which is oppressive. I want to bring them up, which is progressive. Right. So there's oppression and progression. 
I'm trying to deal with them so that they become better. And I take joy in seeing them become better. My spiritual master told me once, he told me, he said, someone may be senior in position, but not necessarily senior in consciousness, which is a very powerful statement. A very, very powerful statement. So we have to have proper relationships. And that means we have to have proper um, evaluation. In the material world, often people say you shouldn't judge. <laughs> they often say we should not, we should be, we should not be judgmental. Um, not necessarily. It depends on what that word means. For some people, judgmental means I want to condemn people. I want to look for faults in people. I want to criticize people. So we absolutely should not do that. And that's mentioned in our scriptures. It's called fault finding. Okay. So we shouldn't do that. But we should be able to try to understand where people are coming from. Why? What's the difference between understanding someone and where they're coming from and being fault finding? The difference is one thing. It is the mood of compassionate service. When we talk about evaluation, when we talk about healthy judgment, it is just like the judgment of a doctor. When you come into the hospital or when you go to visit the doctor, they're going to make some evaluation of you. OK, they're definitely going to try to understand what's happening with this person, but they're trying to understand so that they can make your situation even better for you. You see. So there's that selfless mood. I'm trying to understand what's going on so that I can help this person to be even better. OK, or I may try to understand what's going on so that I can see, oh, they know more than me, and therefore, by associating with them properly, I can make my situation better. Or I'm trying to understand so I can see, oh, there, we're on the same level, so that I can make our situation better. So in all circumstances, the fall or the fruit, the outcome of my evaluation should be that, that the situation is elevated. So if I see that I'm senior to them, I want to elevate their situation. If I see that we're peers, I want to elevate our situation by the give and take of friends. And if I see that they're senior to me, then by serving them, I want to elevate my situation so that I can also progress in Krishna consciousness. That's what actual respect means. It's very interesting. As we look at this, Prabhupada in his um, Nectar of Instruction, he talks about treat, you know, the offering different types of respect to different levels of devotees, right? So the junior devotees is give, offered respect or obeisances in the mind, right? The peers are made friends, right? We have friendship with peers and we're always looking for the association of the advanced or pure devotees so that we can come closer to Krishna by gaining their blessings and by serving them. So it's always about proper interactions and dealings. And this is also very important. The dealings and actually everything we do in life is meant to be based upon reality. What is the truth of our situation? Right, I'll make this last point before we open up the questions. The pain and suffering that we often experience as devotees in our communities, in our relationships, is due to tamas, ignorance. But it's due to a very, very subtle and in some ways hidden or disguised type of ignorance. It is the ignorance of sentimentality. When I'm sentimental, then I don't love people based upon the truth of who they are and where they are. There are many people, many devotees, and they can only love someone, they can only respect someone, and they can only appreciate a person 
when they when they when they pretend that that person is perfect. And when you do this, when we do this, it's because our love is shallow. Our love is superficial. Where there's real love, it's the ability to see someone as they are, good and bad, and still love them, still care for them, still want to help them. Imagine a doctor who, who denies your illness. You come to the doctor, you've got some serious illness, and the doctor wants to pretend it's not there. Because if the doctor recognizes the illness, then he can't, he can't, be, he can't appreciate you anymore. We would all say that that's a bad doctor, isn't it? We will say that this is a bad doctor. It's a superficial doctor. We want the doctor to recognize our illness, but not just to recognize it, not to laugh at us because we're ill, not to look down at, upon, upon us because we're ill. The doctor, we want them to recognize us so that they can actually help us to, to be free of the illness. That is a real loving exchange. But that inability to really see what's going on is reflected also in the way that we look into our own hearts. I've seen this. I've seen this. I've, seen, I've, I've even seen this within myself, that whenever you see someone who can't see the good and bad and still love, it often indicates an individual who is also hiding from the bad within themselves. We can't see the good and bad within others and still love them because we often are hiding from facing the bad within ourselves. And so the behaviors that we're showing towards other people is a reflection of certain problematic behaviors that we are directing towards our own selves. So what we're meant to do in Krishna consciousness is to love Krishna. We learn to practice that love of Krishna through the loving service and friendship of the devotees. And for the love of Krishna, which is the most deep, unlimitedly deep, we have to cultivate that also through the association of devotees by learning to love the devotees deeply, to serve them deeply. That love should not be sentiment. What is sentimentality? It is it is trying to appreciate other people while being ignorant of the truth of where they are, who they are, and how they are. So sentiment is a feeling minus knowledge. So we have some feeling, but it's devoid of the truth. And love is actually the appreciation, the respect, the care, and the compassion based upon the truth. I, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll make this last point, then we'll open up for questions. A mother who claims to love her child and doesn't recognize the good and bad in the child, doesn't recognize, oh, hold on, my child, he should be studying, but he's watching TV or playing computer games. The mother who wants to ignore those things in order to just feel nice, in order to feel nice actually for herself, it's about her. It's not about what the child needs, that's a bad mother. A really loving mother, she recognizes, okay, the child is doing something wrong now. And if I don't address it, because I'm, so, I'm too much interested in the, in the child just liking me and the child just thinking, oh, my mother's so nice. If I don't address it, then the child may be nice to me now, but the child will suffer in the future. So real love, also means selflessness. It means a deep concern, a deep compassion for the ultimate well-being of another individual. And when we have that type of love, then we're no longer sentimental. We no longer ignore things that need to be addressed, but actually we love the person so much that we want to offer what's, what's best for them. And I do stress this point, not force it upon them, but offer that. I remember we were Bhakti Tirtha Marge once and we were in Bhakti Vedanta Manor. And my god sister asked him, how do you, she said, how do you chastise someone who's doing something wrong? And he was really unhappy about the question because she was just a junior devotee. 
and it's not our mood. To, we shouldn't be thinking, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chastise someone who's doing something wrong. He said, you don't even do that. He said, what you do is you make an offering. So if there's something that needs to be addressed, you may say, Prabhu or Mataji, from my perspective, this seems to be a concern. So you're offering it. Because also we may be wrong, but we want to offer. We want to offer with compassion and we want to compassionately receive. So one thing that I took away from this and that I've tried to do in my life and it's had magic effects in my life is change my life is to compassionately reach out to other people and invite feedback. You know, invite. OK, you know, you've known me for some years. You know, please give me some feedback. What, what, what do you feel I'm doing well? What, what do you think I could do better? And in compassionately reaching out for advice and guidance and feedback, depending on the person, and also looking at it wisely, not just blindly accepting it, but taking it, considering it carefully. In doing that, so many wonderful realizations have come, so, me, so much mercy from Krishna, where Krishna has helped me to understand through the devotees, yeah, this is good. And this is something you could work on. So I want to really emphasize this to all of us. And I want to try and practice this more myself. Let's respect each other, but in the deep sense. Respect means to see, to acknowledge. Let's try to understand who we relate to deeply, where they are, where I am in relation to them. And let us try to act accordingly. And in this way, we will avoid, as, as Narada Muni says in the last sentence of this purple, of this verse, sorry, in this way, one is never affected by the threefold mysteries of this material world. Isn't that an incredible benefit? If we do these things, if we relate to devotees, if we relate to people properly, wow, we will, we will Prabhupada says, we, it will make one happy in this material world. Narada Moon says one will ne is never affected by the threefold miseries of this material world. And I'll just say one thing on that. When you have proper seniors, you'll get real amazing guidance. If they're actually senior and you act with, as a proper junior with humility and they act as a senior and they're compassionate, you'll get tremendous insight from them. So whatever you're going through, they will give you, they'll, they'll, all, they'll often be Krishna's uh, messenger. So because of their deeper wisdom and realization, they will give you the answers that will help you to move through different challenges, challenges in life. When you have proper friends like, who are actual friends, actual well-wishers and your actual well-wishers and you're both actual peers, you'll get that mutual support and encouragement. OK, and when you act in a proper way with your juniors, then also those juniors, if they're proper and you're proper, you will also inspire them to grow and they'll also want to reciprocate if they're proper with the way that you've helped them. So this is the formula for deep and proper relationships if we choose to follow it. Okay, and on this point, I'm going to stop and we'll open up for questions with the last 15 minutes. I'll need to leave in 15 minutes time. So just to clarify that. But I'd love to hear any questions or comments that you may have between now and then. So thank you very much, Prabhuji, for a great, wonderful class and especially uh, lots of practical tips and various examples. So thank you very much. Uh, I will request devotees, if they have any questions, comments or relations, please uh, unmute yourself or you can type in chat window. And as Prabhuji said, uh, he has to leave in 15 minutes. So if you have any questions, please fastly unmute yourself. Hare any Krishna. Questions? Hare Krishna. Uh, okay, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, lecture, Prabhuji. Uh, quite many things to understand a little deeply. I wanted to ask uh, uh, how I think uh, uh, how I am understanding it is 
little easier to understand uh, a person senior to you uh, it is easier to understand a person uh, junior to you but uh, you know a person equal how to uh, relate yourself with the equal person first of all how to recognize the equality i i want to understand that mm -hmm. so there's a rule of thumb okay and it's, it doesn't apply in every single circumstance so this is really important to bear in mind but generally mm -hmm. People who've been practicing Krishna consciousness for roughly the same amount of time as we have, they would be considered peers in the spiritual sense. Okay. Now, a bit more to that is that they have a similar level of understanding of the teachings. Okay. And they have a similar level of interest in the teachings. Okay. So, similar enthusiasm, similar understanding. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. No one is exactly the same. It's not like Everyone is exactly the same in understanding, but similar understanding, you know, similar understanding and similar interest in spiritual life as well. So they will be peers. Now, even then, this is very important. Even then, there are so many people who may be similar in understanding and interest, right? Mm -hmm. There's a further point which is mentioned, swajati. Swajati also means like-minded. So let's say that you're a devotee, another person is a devotee, you've both got similar level of understanding and interest, but their specific enthusiasm, they just love deity worship. And that's really what they absolutely love, okay? And let's say you, you love book distribution, and that's fine. Now, you can be friends if there's a common ground, okay? So there's something that you both love to hear from each other, and you, and you have a rapport and it works for both of you, then it's a friendship. But if they're into deity worship and, they, and that's all, and then anything else I don't, I just, I can't, it's boring, et cetera, then they may still be peers, but you may not necessarily be so connected as friends because you may not have some common ground that mutually energizes and inspires you, you see? So someone may be a peer, there's similar level of practice, similar level of understanding, similar level of interest in Krishna consciousness, but they may, but there also needs to be some common ground, some like-mindedness for you to be close, okay? So what happens is this. I'll give you an example, and this happens all the time. In our movement, for example, people may get married, okay? And they may not have some common ground. So let's say that they're both devotees, but one of them, all they want to do is I want to live very simply. I don't want much money. I want to go to the temple every day and live a very simple Krishna conscious life in this way. And let's say they marry, uh, let's say, and let's say that they're an introvert. Okay. And then they marry someone who is, I want to run, I want to, uh, who's an extrovert. I want to have a big career. I don't, I want to go to the temple, but only for festivals. I want to have a big career and do lots of stuff in, in the career, but still be a devotee. Now, the two of them are very, very different. You see? Now, what the mistake that people make is they think, oh, but they're both devotees. Yeah, they're both devotees, but you're marrying the, the fact that they're, your, your connection is due to their, their character. You see? So unless there's some common ground, some real common ground, there may be less and less that they have in common. And when the introvert wants to be by themselves, and that's what energizes them, the extrovert wants to be around other people, you see, and that's what's energizing them. So then if the extrovert has to stay at home all the time, they, they're feeling drained. And if the introvert has to be out with socializing all the time, they're feeling drained. You see, so common ground is also important. But generally, people who are on similar level of practice, experience, enthusiasm, knowledge those people are peers and the rule of thumb is we generally can consider that people who've been around as long as we have we can consider that they are they will be our peers that doesn't mean you have to be friends with every single one of them you should be friendly with with people who are on the same level but your close friends have to be people who you feel a real connection to and they also feel a connection to you does that answer your question namrata Yes, Prabhuji, it, it answers. Thank you, thank you very much.
Thank, Thank you. you very much. And I'll just add, because this is another thing that people often get, devotees, we often get wrong. You're not going to be close to everyone. Okay? Because to be close to someone requires a big investment of time and energy. So sometimes people become disappointed in life because they feel like I don't have loads of friends. But actually, no one has loads of friends except Krishna. Because to have deep relationships requires time, effort, energy, and like-mindedness. So we should be friendly to everyone, but the people that we have very close connection with, there will be a few people who we've spent lots of time with, we've got to know, they've got to know us, and we've seen that there's a real natural connection and resonance. Those people are real friends, and that happens over time as well. Thank you for that, number. And just to your, to, uh, in terms of answering your question, I hope that also helps Hetal, because I think we answered your question, how do we identify as a junior or a senior? So if we know that friends are people who've got similar level of understanding, interest, enthusiasm, then someone senior will be someone who has a significantly greater understanding and realization and experience. And the junior is someone who has a significantly lower level of understanding, experience and practice. See, that's how it would work. Thank you for that question. Do we have any other questions or comments? Uh, 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 Hare Krishna, uh, I have a couple of uh, questions, but you have a uh, little time. So is it possible that uh, I can mail you or something, my questions? Yeah, you can. Or alternatively, I'm sure I'll give class again. So if you, if you want to hold on to those questions, and next time I give class, you can just ask. Then that's fine. Even fun because I'm thinking that that way everyone will benefit from your question. Is that okay? Oh uh, yes, that could be a good idea. Yes, mm. but it's a request. Probably next time, please take some more time. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, just the reason why I've had to end soon on this call is because I have another call which I which I scheduled before I was asked to give this class. That's why. But yeah, okay. yeah. Normally I'd have more time, but I already put something in the diary for yeah. Before, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions or comments? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for a lovely class and I won't take a long time. Uh, you very, very nicely explained the, how to maintain the relationship with equal higher and lower of uh, devotees or the people. We can say generalize any, anyone who can, we come across. But what happens if uh, we try to help our juniors to come up to the higher level and then they turn around in a different way and then like, you know, they use us as a step stone. How do we do? What shall we do? Yeah. So there's two things. It's a question of, if that happens, see, is, I'm going to do a seminar on this actually about avoiding how we avoid being victims. And this seminar will come on Sunday. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that, that will be, and, and actually people, if you're, if you want to join, I can, what I can do is I can send the information to um, the Mataji who looks after this group, Trimati Devi. So and Mataji has already sent Prabhu the information in the group. So all the devotees have got that information. Oh, is it the one about purple power? That, that one? Yes, perfect. Yes, perfect. Okay. Oh, yeah. one, for the Sunday. Okay, for Sunday, yeah. So we're going to talk about this in a lot more detail, so you might find that interesting. So there's two things. Whenever things don't turn out a certain way, the first thing to do, if we, if we really want to grow, is to look at ourselves and think, you know, why did this happen? Why did it turn out this way? What, what did I do which wasn't necessarily so expert mm -hmm. that caused this to happen? Now... Mm -hmm. To add to your, um, to your point, sometimes it happens like that because the way that we help the junior was not done with detachment. Mm. So when we, when we try to assist other people, it also has to be done with detachment. So again, third verse of Shikshashikam, you know, respect of all respect without, depend, um, without expecting any respect from other people. Now that doesn't mean that we allow people to mistreat us. But it means that when we offer something, it should be done with a certain detachment. And if people are not willing to accept, okay, 
fair enough. I'm not God. I'm not Krishna. I'm offering this advice. If you don't want to accept it, that's also your choice. You see, but I'm not there waiting for you to accept whatever I say and et cetera, et cetera. And then the other thing, to be honest, is such a good question because I'm getting realization because you're asking. The other thing is one of the ways in which we avoid being too upset if our juniors don't take our advice is if we've got enough, if we're not, if we are engaging or giving enough investment to all three levels of relationship. So sometimes we get too upset because we're spending all of our time on our juniors and we're not spending enough time with our peers and enough time with our seniors. True. So we're much more affected by the juniors because we're not getting nourishment from our peers and seniors. Mm. You see? But if I'm getting nourishment from my seniors and I'm getting nourishment by my peers, then if the junior doesn't accept, okay, I'm just offering this for their benefit. If they don't accept this, okay. But if I'm not getting any nourishment by my seniors and I'm not getting any nourishment by, by my peers and the only association is the juniors and they don't behave properly, then I get much more hurt because I'm relying on them to, to fill my tank. Mm. I'm relying on them to charge my batteries, which is not what we should expect of juniors. With juniors, we should expect that we're giving rather than receiving. With peers, we should expect that we're giving and receiving. And with seniors, we should expect that we're receiving, but we should try to reciprocate. So juniors, if they're proper, they should also reciprocate with what's being given, at least by having gratitude. And also they should reciprocate by trying to apply what's being shared. Okay. So as we said earlier, there's qualifications on everyone's side, right? Mm -hmm. Both the, if in a friendship, both friends have to be qualified. Between seniors and juniors, both of them have to be qualified, meaning both have to behave properly if the relationship is to continue and grow nicely. True. Yeah. Okay. And then also the last thing I'll add is sometimes if you see that you're offering something to a junior and you're trying to consistently help them and they're not able to appreciate it, then you may recognize, okay, maybe I should give that energy and that assistance to some other person who can take advantage of it. You see? So that's the point. So you, you offer, and this is very interesting. I was thinking about this and talking about this with a friend, a devotee friend recently. Years ago, I heard, I heard a class on relationship and it really helped me, right? It really helped me for future relationships because I wasn't in a relationship at the time. But, but one of the things that really has stayed in my mind for years from that class, the speaker quoted the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, for those who um, surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly, right? As you surrender, I, re I reciprocate, basically. Mm -hmm. And the speaker mentioned that that's the, that's the law of relationships. He said, if you care about Krishna, he reciprocates with your care. He said, if you mm -hmm. don't care about Krishna, he becomes neutral. Mm -hmm. He doesn't stop caring. But he says, okay, you don't want, at this time, you're not willing to be in relationship with me. Okay, it's your choice. And so what that means is in every relationship, you're looking to see that there's reciprocation. So you're helping the junior and you see that they're reciprocating by accepting, appreciating and using what you're sharing. If you see that they don't take it seriously, then that, that may be a sign. You still try it. But if having tried a certain amount, you see that they're not able to take advantage of it. Okay, fair enough. Then maybe some other senior will be better to help you because when I'm trying to help you, it's not you're not able to appreciate or it may or or I may not be able to offer the guidance in the way that you need it at this time. That's okay. So maybe find maybe there's someone else who can give you the guidance at this time that you need. Fair enough. Same thing with a friend. If there's someone and you're trying to build friendship and there's not that mutual give and take, right? So you should be conscious and you say, Oh, I'm trying to reciprocate, but it's there's not this mutual give and take. Now there's a little caveat. Sometimes a friend may not reciprocate because their circumstance doesn't allow it because they're in some real difficulty. You know, let's say you had a close friend and then they got they got ill and they're in hospital. We can't expect that there's going to be the same reciprocation because they're in a bad situation. But mm -hmm. the sign that they're friends, the sign of good friendship is that generally when they are able to reciprocate, they, they're willing to. You see, that means there's that. Yeah. Again, yeah to mum. There's reciprocation as, as and when and how they can. They, they, their heart is into, yeah, you're a friend, you share with me, I'm a friend, I share with you. There's a, there's a genuine willingness to give and receive. 
Mm-hmm. And again, same with, your, with our seniors, you know, we're able to, they're willing to receive and we're willing to appreciate and reciprocate with what they're giving. That's a good sign. So when you see that there's a lack of reciprocation, that can be a sign that, okay, we need to look at this. And we first look at ourselves. There's a lack of reciprocation. Is it something I'm doing wrong? Mm-hmm. Is it that I'm not reciprocating? Is it that I'm not, not sharing in the way that can be appreciated by this person? So we try different things, mm-hmm. but we also look and see. Sometimes it, it may just be, you know what? It may just be that the chemistry between me and this person is such that it's not quite the right connection. So mm-hmm. I wish them well, I don't hate them, but I know that maybe there's some other relationship where there may be mutu- more mutual reciprocation and we, give, and we give that, but there's no loss because I tried to serve to please Krishna in the best of my ability. Does that, does that make sense? Very nice, thank you so much. Very nice. No, thank, you. thank you. There's, a, thank you know, there's you. so much to this and we, it's such an interesting topic, but um, you just want to share that. Okay, thank you so much for your questions. Um, I'll be giving a seminar on how to, it, which relates to this topic on Sunday. You have the details and feel free to join us if you would like to. Thank you very much, Hari. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you very much for your wonderful class. And also, thank you for accepting this, uh, giving class things on very, very short notice. So really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And, 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 wishing, you all, ki jai. and wishing you all well on your spiritual journey. If we, if we practice and reflect on this verse in purple, and if we apply this properly without sentiment, so in a loving, truthful, and sincere way, we will find that so many positive things will happen in our relationships. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And the, and the verse is 4834 of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much.